You're watching the Oscar nominated short feeling through. It's an incredible film, a film about the power of human connection. And it's the first film ever to star uh, someone who is deaf and blind, but an actor with so many talents, brilliant talents to bring to the table. So I want to bring them all in now. Joining me now is a prolific and innovative filmmaker, Doug Rowland, and the film's star, Stephen Prescott, who joins us now. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. And first of all, congratulations on this wonderful nomination for the Academy Award. But let's go back to the beginning. How did you two meet and embark upon this wonderful journey to tell this remarkable story? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us today. It's really an honor to be here. And, you know, maybe Stephen, maybe I'll set up the, the my side of how we met. And I love, I would love if you fill it in. But, um, you know, it, we, I actually had a lot of trouble casting the role of Tariq um, because I had such a clear sense energetically of what I was looking for um, from, from that actor. And I saw a lot of really talented young actors in New York, but no one was like quite fitting the bill for me. No one was like quite capturing that thing that I couldn't put my finger on, but like I, I would know when I'd see it um, to the point where we, we had a very narrow window to cast it. And we were, we were getting ready for the final callbacks. And I was saying like, we can't do final callbacks because I, I know he's not here yet. Like I know I haven't seen him. So we got some um, last minute um, self tapes and um, maybe I'll, I'll pause for a second. And Stephen, maybe why don't you fill in your side of, of, of this story? So after I submitted my self tape, I remember getting a call back and that's when I was able to have a face-to-face -face audition with, with Doug. So when I got there, actually, it was a funny thing. When I actually got there, I met Doug in the elevator before actually getting into the, uh, the actual auditioning room. Oh, wow. Weird. And I asked him and I said, uh, well, I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was because I looked him up. And I was like, oh, do you know where I have to sign it? Like where I have to go? He was like, oh, yeah, the sign in sheet and everything is right over there. And then we're going to be setting up and everything. Whatever. I was like, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah, when I went in there, actually, the, um, the person who I had in my mind when I went into this role was this kid named Norixon that I uh, that I randomly met in the street. He he actually been going through like the same things that Tariq has been going through. So uh, that was sort of the energy that I had when I walked in and um, and filmed for my audition with Doug. And I will say, Kelly, that like no exaggeration here. Um, it's one of those moments um, when you're casting something where the second Steven walked in and opened his mouth, I'm like, we got it. And it was like, it was like that clear, like literally he probably said one word. He probably didn't even say a full word. He probably like made part the sound of part of a word. And I'm like, we got, we got our guy. And he was the first actor up that day. So it was like such a relief knowing we had like one more shot to, to find our guy. And that he, it happened to be Steven who's first up that day. So, you know, it was definitely kismet. We later found out that we have birthdays a day apart and a lot of other wow. things that kind of cross over. So we're like, we feel like we were like orbiting like the kind of the same, you know, kind of the same system here and it worked out perfectly. Yeah. I'd go one step further. You two are brothers. <laughs> you know, it, I, I definitely, uh, I'd say there's certainly uh, th that kind of connection going on for sure. Yeah, what a great connection. So so let me get this straight then, because Doug, you you created some some groundbreaking opportunities in, in this in this film. Uh, tell me about that, because it's, it will lend itself now to a whole lot of uh, opportunities for other actors. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we're certainly hoping, hoping from this. And, um, you know, I had this, this chance encounter in real life 10 years ago that inspired this. And I knew from the start of making it that I wanted to cast uh, a deafblind actor in the role of the deafblind character, Artie, in the film. And fortunately, I was able to partner with the Helen Keller National Center throughout this entire process. And still three years down the line, um, still, still close partners. Um, and, that allowed me to gain the knowledge um, and the connection and the real meaningful relationships with the deafblind community to not only cast Robert, who's our deafblind actor who does an amazing job, but to really make sure that the film was done authentically and that it was something that would do justice to this community that's unrepresented. And we all know the responsibility anytime you're representing a community that's underrepresented or not represented at all, even with the best intentions, if you're not 
creating something that's authentic, you can inadvertently be, you know, really setting back the perceptions of a community in certain people's eyes if you don't do it justice and do it authentically. You know, we've taken one excuse away from people who are making films. Um, uh, they can't say that you can't do it with an actor who's deafblind because we've done it and we've done it successfully. And we're hoping that this is the start of many opportunities for people, not only in the deafblind community, but many other parts of the disability community that have been historically um, had almost no opportunities. What an amazing film. I guarantee if you go see it, you will walk away and you will feel very, very uh, inspired. And, and the two gentlemen who are making this possible, and by the way, congratulations, gentlemen, on your Academy Award nomination. It's so big and it's so right and it's so deserved. I'm talking to Doug Rowland and Stephen Prescott. And Stephen, what does it mean for you uh, to be a part of this groundbreaking film? And, and also to bring your talents to this effort overall to really awaken the world to say, uh, don't discriminate, don't disregard, don't count me out because of what you think you might know about me. Oh, that's a beautiful question, Kelly. And uh, it, 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 it just puts a battery in my back to just keep on, keep on driving, keep on rolling that wheel. Because like, honestly, you know, especially with this business, this industry that I'm, I'm, I'm looking to embark into, it's like, it could be pretty difficult and overwhelming. And sometimes you can second guess yourself, like, am I doing what I'm meant to be doing? Am I doing the right thing? And then like seeing the feedback that feeling through has, uh, how, it, how it has been affecting like people that, that's been watching it, you know, I, it's like, wow, like I, I feel that I am doing what I am set to be doing in this daytime in history. So I, I'm, I'm excited to just keep on going and, and keep pushing. Uh, Doug, uh, look, you know, you're out there and, and you're producing films and you're working in Hollywood, which can sometimes and oftentimes be a very mean place. But here you are finding these uh, these uh, wonderful moments of inspiring people through your artistry. Um, how, how did you come to that, uh, that conclusion that this was your why? I think a lot of, um, you know, what would, what you could very much label as uh, failures or the things that didn't happen are the things that have served me by far the most in my journey. And I think I, I've always, um, I've always thought of myself as a late bloomer and not, I don't mean that in a negative connotation. Um, and I think what the, what, what the uh, failures or, or, you know, rejections of, of the past provided for me was first and foremost, the need to look in the mirror and really ask myself, do you want to do this? And why do you want to do this? But the, what, but the resounding answer back was I'm doing this for reasons deeper than, um, you know, outside validation or a certain paycheck, though those things are nice too. Certainly not, not, um, you know, not saying otherwise, but there, there were certain things that would come up in my stories that were things that were from a much deeper place that I felt really, a, a real, really compelled to capture and do my best to make and share with people. There's a universal resonance. And I think that's what we've been most grateful for is the fact that this is a film that has meant just as much to the deafblind community that's experienced it, that's really at the heart of it, than it has to any other kind of person that's come across it. And particularly through the lens of pandemic and a really divisive time over the last year that we've been showing it, we've had hundreds and hundreds of people reach out to us and say, this is exactly what I needed to see right now to turn things around. I want to thank both of you for staying true to your story, true to who you are. And uh, let's see what happens. Again, congratulations on getting the nod from the Academy Award, uh, Stephen Prescott, as well as uh, Doug Rowland. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.